What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the CodaCast. My name is Brian Bermudez, and I'm the host of the Craft of the Air podcast, the aviation podcast that really just expands your knowledge. And each and every episode, join me and my guest as we explore the untold world of aviation together. I'm so glad that you guys are tuned in for another episode. It's been quite a while. It's been it's been quite a while. Um, it's been just such a busy summer, um, and just finally getting the opportunity to make uh, a new episode of the Codacast and great inspiration from my summer class. My summer class inspired me. Some of my students were like, "You know what? You got you got to make another episode of the Codacast." It's been it's been a while. I agree. Here I am. So. In today's episode, I mean, th- this is a great episode. We're going to cover a couple of different um, interesting uh, aviation uh, news topics and, and really, you know, highlighting, of course, the aviation maintenance shortage. And but just kind of the broader picture here is just so many uh, negative stories coming out of aviation and mainstream media, uh, many people taking notice and and. and just some really bad looks for aviation, image-wise and, and credibility-wise. You know, uh, we touch on a couple of things here in this uh, this welcome back episode, the welcome back Carter episode of the Coda Cast. But um, man, I mean, really, we take a look at uh, aircraft maintenance engineers in Canada striking, and they took a strike. Um, and and this ended at the end of July, but we, but we really we dive into that and look at some critical questions into how these types of uh, incidents can be avoided. Really, you never want to get to the point where you have uh, aircraft maintenance engineers that are striking and and bringing uh, you know an airline to a complete halt. You know, but that being said, Boeing giving us their new uh, technician outlook and the and the numbers are, are still very much up there kind of, you know, playing into the maintenance shortage and, and how it's really contributing to uh, uh, an excess excess baggage, I would say, uh, on aviation in general. You know, th- this lack of talent coming in and this great amount of, of talent retiring at the same time is, is kind of the perfect storm, so to say. And we speak about this and we speak about Delta Airlines, of course, you know, making national worldwide news with IT issues. And and this has just hi- just highlighting this IT and AI revolution and everything that's coming into play here. You know, anyway, we, we, we take a really close look at all those stories in today's episode of the Codecast. Welcome back to the show. And we'll bring you the latest updates from the sky. Today, we're delving into really several significant stories. And we're going to explore. We're, we're going to dive deep into these stories. First things first, today's episode of the Codacast is brought to you by Craft of the Air. Is your aircraft grounded due to maintenance delays? Uh, feeling lost in the world of aviation solutions? Uh, at Coda, we understand your challenges. Craft of the Air offers efficient and reliable maintenance services to get you back in the air faster. Whether it's maintenance, AOG calls, or thorough inspections, our team of experts has you covered. Need guidance navigating complex aviation projects? Hmm. Consulting by Coder provides tailored advice and cutting-edge insights, ensuring your projects take flight smoothly. And what about A&P students? I got something for you as well. Take control of your future Crowned by coders, your ultimate study companion is led by certified A&P subject matter experts, and it has tailored courses to ensure you're fully prepared to ace any A&P exam. Coder is more than just consultants. We're basically your aviation personal assistant. Uh, you got to check out the website, www.craftedair.com. Again, that's www.craftedair.com. And learn how Craft of the Air can elevate your aviation journey. Craft of the Air where every project takes flight. So we jump right into it. You know, first story is WestJet Airlines, aircraft maintenance engineers strike over there. And our first story is is in Canada. You know, our brothers up up north and the WestJet Airlines grappled with a, a significant operational challenge as their aircraft maintenance engineers initiated a strike, right? 
So this strike essentially lasted from uh, Friday night, June 28th, until Sunday night of uh, the 30th of June. And, oh, two days or so, right? But the, but, but the two days, it was more than 800 flights that were canceled during the strike. And the strike, it, it disrupted travel on Can- uh, you know, Canada's second biggest airline, WestJet's Canada's second biggest airline. You know, not to mention it was during one of the busiest uh, travel weekends of the year in the country. Quote, the damage to Canadians and our airline is massive and a swift resolution was necessary. WestJet, end quote, WestJet President um, uh, Mr. Penn had noted. Um, and, and, you know, really a swift resolution was taken by WestJet, and that was a good thing. Um, he went on to say, quote, we take no victory laps on this outcome, but we will uh, sleep better tonight knowing further harm has been prevented, end quote. And that was WestJet uh, President Mr. Penn. You know, really, when you look at something like this and a, a, a major strike of aircraft maintenance engineers and a major airline, second biggest airline in Canada, you know, how can airlines, I guess, you know, b- better navigate these types of labor disputes, you know, especially ones that are going to directly impla- uh, impact flight operations, you know, it, it, really when you look at this, And you look at an airline, they need to prioritize fair and transparent negotiations for AMPs and aircraft maintenance engineers. You know, the the long-term benefits, you know, of maintaining a satisfied and and well-compensated workforce, it goes without saying. You know, strong labor relationships are just essential. And preventing such strikes and and ensuring that there's continuous and safe operations. And, you know, it's important because this includes engaging in regular and and open communication with maintenance teams, you know, ensuring that their concerns, suggestions, they're heard, acted upon. You know, and another thing that really has to be spoken about is competitive compensation. You know, these airlines really need to offer competitive compensation. With that continuous training, where does this engineer, you know, see himself in 10 to 15 years? Training opportunities, career development programs. You know, these are the types of things that are really going to help and build these strong relationships to, to avoid these types of, of disruptions from occur. You know, we move on to our second story, and this one's with Boeing. And don't worry, I'm not going to bash Boeing. Um, I. <laughs> I, I just won't. It, it's just, it's, it would take a lot. But this story by Boeing, it really, it's going back to the aircraft maintenance engineers, right? And what we have here is a shortage of in-demand high talent. You know, aviation, um, it, we, we, aircraft cannot fly without an aircraft maintenance engineer if you're an a and p or an a and p student listening or watching you're definitely an engineer hey just on a side note i mean you really have to if someone has to think about that to distinguish an a and p mechanic from an engineer like an auto mechanic an a and p should really be called an aircraft maintenance engineer the united states is the only place in the world where they're called mechanics. You really have to see if you're not a mechanic or you've never, or you don't know anyone that's a mechanic or you've never been to uh, airframe or power plant school, you really have to take a look at some of the stuff that an A&P has to learn to get their license. You would be shocked. You, you, you would be, I guarantee you would be shy. You'd be like, wait, they have to know this. All right. I'm, I'm going on a side note. This Boeing's aviation crew outlook. Our next story is 
focusing on this recent adjustment that Boeing had in their aviation uh, crew outlook, the 2024 crew outlook in Boeing, they actually increased their forecast for the number of pilots and engineers needed over the next 20 years. I said engineers. Notice that? And it can't be technician. Don't call us a technician because that's, that's the same person that comes to troubleshoot my home internet. What can I say? Citing, this is over the next 20 years, and Boeing citing the rapid growth in air travel demand and the expansion of uh, airline fleets. And this is not just in the United States, this is globally. So now check this. This forecast on the scores really this urgency it's it's an urgency that needs to be addressed what needs to be addressed the aircraft maintenance engineering shortage there's just not enough you know there's not enough to keep up with the industry's growth it's not enough amps it's not enough aircraft maintenance professionals check check this I'm going to blow your mind. Globally, globally, airlines will require 674,000 new pilots, 716,000 new engineers or AMPs, and 980,000 new flight attendants to assess these growing fleets. Okay? Boeing estimated that airlines will require nearly 44,000 new aircraft by the year 2043. Quote, driven by aviation traffic trending above pre-pandemic levels, personal uh, attention and commercial fleet growth, the demand for aviation personnel continues to rise. End quote. And this was Chris Broom, the Vice President of Commercial Training Solutions for Boeing Global Services. And this was in a press release. You know, How can the aviation industry attract and train the next generation of maintenance technicians and pilots to meet the growing demand that we speak of? Uh, It is really simple. I mean, it's simple answer, complicated solution, I guess. The, The aviation industry needs to invest heavily and heavily really on educational training programs. You know, the partnerships that can be formed with aviation schools universities, you know, these can help to create steady pipeline of skilled professionals, AMPs and pilots, you know. The, the, when you think about where you need to, to start attracting students into these fields, it has to be the high school level, you know. It's very difficult, you know. I'm a professor of aircraft maintenance. I teach this in the college level. To see the specific uh, demographic that we see coming into aviation maintenance, there's just so much potential to reach more students. And where does it have to, where does it have to begin in the high school level? You know, students in high schools, they should really be exposed to careers in aviation, I would say. And this is occurring in certain initiatives and programs throughout the country, but it needs to be happen, happening on the broader scale. You know, thinking about really attracting talent, one thing that I've always mentioned is just these scholarships and internship opportunities to attract these students. You know, airlines really and manufacturers need to take note of this, and they should really be supporting scholarship programs and these internships to, to really attract the younger talent. Again, the younger talent. You know, th- this eventually will play into uh, technology and innovations, you know, and, and advanced technologies that begin to become introduced into aviation maintenance. You know, if we can leverage, if we're leveraging these advanced technologies and training specifically, and let's be more specific in, in virtual reality, you know, virtual reality, simulation-based learning. You know, these can make learning processes much more efficient and certainly more engaging for the students. 
any A and P students listening or watching, you could definitely relate. I could tell you. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, and one other thing I could definitely think of is government support. You know, definitely government and regulatory bodies can definitely take uh, crucial roles, and and you know, really by providing funding for these aviation educational programs, they have to incentivize these students to pursue careers in aviation maintenance and piloting. You know, now we shift gears a little bit. And we go to to Delta Airlines. Delta Airlines is really uh, an airline that that I really seldomly speak on, um, and, and a very well run airline. Oh, we don't hear much coming out of Delta until just recently, and Delta has just had a score of flight cancellations, so much so that the DOT, the Department of Transportation, is investigating. Yes. United States. Now we shift gears over here. And I'm with Delta Airlines, hometown airline, uh, recently under a lot of scrutiny. This is after a series of flight cancellations and delays. Score of them. The DOT or the Department of Transportation is investigating Delta following this widespread outage that affected the airline's operations and it led to significant passenger disruptions. The outage was reportedly linked to a cyber attack on one of Delta's uh, vendors, highlighting really the vulnerability of here, man, that we have uh, these airline operations to these external cyber threats. Yeah. I mean, really, the U.S. Department of Transportation's Office of Aviation Consumer Protection is investigating Delta Airlines following this continued widespread flight uh, the flight disruptions and these reports of concerning cu- customer service failures. You know, it's it's interesting. The DOT said in a statement, "quote the uh, the process will continue to evolve as the DOT learns more and processes the high volume of consumer complaints we have already received against Delta." End quote. That was a statement made by the Department of Transportation. And you know, while many airlines were disrupted by the internet outage caused by CrowdStrike, update gone wrong, uh, Delta was by itself and still having substantial cancella- uh, cancellations through into well into Monday. By Monday, Delta had canceled more than 1,300 flights and Sunday around 1,200 flights. And and really, that's a lot of flights, you know, by a major carrier. You know, it, it, there, there has to be certain measures that can, can be taken to protect these airline operations from these types of cyber threats, you know, really to ensure the continuity of service, reliable service. It's interesting, really, when you speak on the topic of, you know, cybersecurity investments, of course, you know, of course, there has to be uh, more done in terms of of investments. And this is on the airlines part. You know, airlines need to invest in, in robust cybersecurity measures to protect these operations from these types of threats. You know, this is including regular security audits. You know, whatever it, it may be, comprehensive employee training, you know, these types of things have to occur. And, and really, where's the redundancy in these systems? You know, are there backups? You know, I think ensuring that there's backup systems and contingency plans that, that they're in place, you know, it really can help to mitigate the impact of such outages and it can really help to maintain service or continuity. As mentioned before, you know, airlines need to definitely keep note of these types of incidents and really collaborating with each other is something that's that's really important in protecting that something like this never occurs. But we hope that this is 
uh, one of the last times that we see something this widespread occurring with, with a major airline and affecting so many travelers. Yeah. And now we move on to our final story in the Codacast and with it's it's it just all ties together here. You know, we have this aircraft maintenance shortage. We have mechanics who are left striking in certain parts of the world. You know, and with all of this, we have so much news of maintenance wait times. Just very, very long wait times for maintenance to get done. And specifically engine maintenance. Engine maintenance right now really has one of the highest wait times of all maintenance uh, tasks. Yes. You know, finally, one of the last things that we really wanted to cover in this episode was this, you know, it, this is a, a, a growing concern to kind of take note of. You know, within the industry, there w- within the industry, there's a very high wait time for aircraft engine maintenance. And as airlines expand their fleets, increase their fleet schedules, the demand for engine maintenance has really surged. And this is leading to longer wait times and potential delays in aircraft availability. You know, the worldwide shortage of parts. There's no secret. We've spoken about it in previous episodes of the Codacast. You know, skilled labor and new aircraft after post-pandemic aviation boom. This this all coupled with a higher frequency of engine maintenance for, you know, really next generation fuel efficient engines. And it's it's resulted in the longest ever waits for aircraft maintenance, for engine maintenance. Yeah. According to a Redders report, airlines will face increasing wait times for engine uh, maintenance with demand and wait times estimated to peak in 2026. We're in 2024 right now. I mean, they're two years away from this. You'll see it. We're, we're getting towards this. And it can really snowball if we're not careful. You know, the parts and the labor shortage will really put a, an immense pressure on maintenance, repair, and overhaul, you know, or MRO providers worldwide. You know, as they really struggle to keep up with this increasing demand for maintenance. And the report is really highlighting another, um, another fatal flaw. Whereas we're relying upon these singular sources for maintenance. And now these singular sources just have too much workload. Another report by consultancy agent Bain and Company. According to this report, the turnaround time for next generation engines, such as Pratt and Whitney and GF, uh, GTF, um, the CFM International, the Leaps, all of those engines, they're 150 times um, higher than pre-pandemic values and 35% higher for legacy engine types. You know, Jim Harris, the co-leader of Bain Global's aerospace and defense practice, he spoke about these findings saying, quote, the aircraft engine MRO demand is likely to experience a near-term peak in 2026 and remain constrained through the end of the decade. Mm-hmm. The next large surge in demand from the next generation engines will begin towards the end of 2030 unless MRO companies act quickly to close this capacity gap. Airlines will face higher costs to operate constrained fleets. He went on to say the financial burden on top of growing costs to decarbonize air travel is likely to slow passenger travel growth, end quote. And, you know, the problem is really being this exasperated. It, it, the problem is really being exasperated by, you know, slower delivery of uh, newer aircraft by Boeing and Airbus and Embraer, you know. And the slower delivery of these aircraft really forces the airline to operate the older aircraft with the older engines, they, which often require more com- complicated and time-consuming maintenance and parts for that matter and the parts are harder to find you know 
to the age of those those aircraft that are operational. So it really something that can certainly be be fixed. You know, what what can be done to reduce the wait times and improve the efficiency of, of these turnarounds and the engine maintenance processes, you have to really increase the workforce. You know, it's as simple as that. Increasing the number of qualified maintenance technicians is really essential to handle the workforce, you know, advanced diagnostic tools could definitely help the situation, certainly, and really a big part of it is supply chain. You know, you can have optimization of supply chains and collaboration between the airlines, maintenance providers, and the manufacturers, then you can really optimize the supply chain for parts services. That's going to ensure that you have the necessary components to complete the job. You know, and, and quality assurance always has to be maintained when you speak about these things, you know, ensuring that the quality while reducing wait times, it, this, this, this really involves rigorous training, you know, adherence to regulatory um, compliance um, practices, you know, best practices, so to say, regulatory audits, and, you know really so much that goes into that but so but so much to really consider and as we come to 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 the close of this episode of the Codacast, you know the aviation maintenance shortage is is a critical issue that ties together the recent airline struggles you know with the labor disputes the cybersecurity threats the demand for parts you know the shortage impacts not only the airlines and and the professionals but also the everyday traveler you know, this causes widespread disruption and, and really inconvenience. You know, how can the aviation industry address this maintenance shortage to ensure a more resilient and efficient future? It, it really lies within that workforce development that we spoke on, you know, embracing advanced maintenance technologies, attracting uh, younger talent, passionate younger talent. With that being said, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Codacast. I thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode. Thanks for joining us on this episode. This episode of the Codacast was brought to you by Craft of the Air. Need help with your aircraft? Schedule your free consultation at www.craftoftheair.com. Again, that's www.craftoftheair.com and learn everything Craft of the Air can do for you. Got a question or want to see the latest aviation insights? Follow Craft of the Air on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube and use the hashtag Codacast. All right. I'm getting used to kind of getting used to the social media. Actually, I deleted it for a while because I hate it, but I will promote it. I'll promote it on this. Yes, I will. Thank you again, guys, for joining us on this journey through the latest news in aviation. Stay tuned as we continue to bring you the stories that shape our skies. Fly safe. And until next time, thank you so much for being with us. I hope you be safe and have a great one. We'll be seeing you soon.